Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be going over vertex displacement using the normals of a mesh. It's not going to be a complicated subject, but it is a very important subject. I'm going to go over what normals are and how they function and then use them to displace the mesh to make it have more detail than it did when it was actually modeled. So going ahead and jumping into Godot, we have our mesh here and I went ahead and just duplicated everything with the basic textures. I removed the stuff having to do with LODs because they weren't important. And we have all of our textures right here, but if we go up to the top left, we can switch over to a vertex, to a vertex shader. Now vertex shaders are how you actually modify the vertices. Before we do that, I do want to go over how meshes are constructed. So meshes are constructed of these little dots called vertices that have planes in between them, which are constructed of triangles and eventually come out as quads. But in actuality, all meshes are made up of triangles. So this little square right here is made up of two triangles, which each one is sharing two vertices. Now these vertices have other data than just their position. They also have color, which we'll get into it at a later date, and they have normals, which normals are these little blue lines pointed out. Out from this mesh right here. I'm just visualizing it in Blender. And what these normals do is tell the engine how to approximate the lighting in between the vertices. If we go ahead and turn off the lines, we can see that the lighting is rather smooth. And this is despite the fact that it's really just made up of a bunch of little squares. And that's because in between the points, it blends between one vertices normals and another. So if we switch back to Godot, we can use those normals to offset the vertices in that direction. So if we go ahead and go over to the shader editor, let's add in a new node. And we're going to be calling in the vertex node. And this is just the vertices current location. We're also going to go ahead and bring in the normal node. And this is the normal direction. It's a vector pointed in this case outwards from this sphere. And we're going to use a multiply add node. So if we type in M-U-L-T and we scroll down a little bit, you'll see this multiply add node right here. And all this does is take in an input, multiply it by value and add it to another value. This was constructed as far as I'm aware of specifically for this operation. So we take in the normal map and let's go ahead and multiply it by a vector three. We're going to type in vector three compose and we're just going to multiply it by say one in the Y axis. And we drag in the vertice, so it's adding it to the vertice and we'll output that as the vertex. And you can see already it's gone ahead and deformed it vertically. Now this affects the shadows and this also affects the visuals and obviously this isn't exactly what we want what we want is to, to displace based off of the texture but you can go ahead and play with this and like do whatever you like with it just to, so that you understand how this all works let's go ahead and delete this vector compose and let's bring in a texture 2d node we'll set this mode to sampler port and we'll drag out of there and we'll create a new texture 2d parameter let's call this height map now its type will be data we're not going to worry about anything else everything else is fine and we'll drag out of the color instead of the whole color because we don't actually need a vector 3 and because the because the height maps are just a grayscale image we'll pull out of just the red it won't really matter which channel you pull out of as long as you pull out of one of them and if we go over to the the test sphere I already had the height map assigned to it and you can see it's kind of deforming it based off the height map but it looks a little bit weird it's deforming it way too much so let's go ahead and multiply that by a value let's pull out of the red channel we'll type in multiply and we're going to create a new float multiply operation we'll pull out of the second option there and type in float parameter we're just going to call this displacement value and let's give it a default value of one and let's set it as a range from zero to two or something like that. It doesn't really matter what you set this up to set it up to whatever you like. Then we pull out that output and put it into the B input on the multiply add node. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's not too complicated. So if we go ahead and drag that around, you can see it goes and displaces it along the normal. In wherever the texture is higher, it pushes it out. And wherever it's lower, it leaves it alone. Now, there's one thing to note. If we increase this, the lighting doesn't adjust because those normals aren't being rebuilt for the new position in world space. So that's something to be aware of. You're not going to have the best lighting when you displace an extreme amount. One way to combat this, and I do stress this is just one option. There are other options options. If we go ahead and increase the normal map power to something like two, it looks a lot more realistic as if it's been extruded outwards. And that's pretty much it. We'll leave it here for today. Next week, we're going to go over some slightly more complicated subjects having to do with something called varyings, which is how we're going to sync up the UVs between the height map and the color map, despite the fact that, that one is on the vertex shader and one is on the fragment shape. Because if we manipulate the UVs of one, we would have to manipulate the UVs of the other. And varyings are how we sync those two things together. So we'll go over that next week. Nothing too complicated this week. I hope you all found something useful and I hope you all have a wonderful week. We'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.